you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. Don't linger on the specifics. You have a job to do here. Just get in there and do what needs to be done. We're all counting on you. Look, you're already on the path that leads to the cabin. Why would you be here if it weren't to complete a very important task? You've made it this far, you might as well reach the end of your journey. While I appreciate the mental exercise, we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she's dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. And before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. Causality doesn't matter here, because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and it's about to ruin everything. Unless, of course, you do your job and slay her. Does it? Are you a monarchist? Is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman or a miller or a seamstress? If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. Are you serious? No, you have to do it. Oh, if only that were the case, but I don't make the rules. I have to say, I'm surprised at your reluctance thus far, but unfortunately for the both of us, you're the only one who can pull this off. Like I said, I don't make the rules, no matter how much I wish I did. Of course I haven't. Why would I even consider that? Nobody wants the world to end. I mean, maybe some people do. Like nihilists, or very, very evil people, but surely you're not one of those, right? Yes, but you'll have to slay her before you get it. It's a secret, but I think you'll like it. It's a special reward, just for you. And whatever you think it might be, I can promise you it's going to be even better than your wildest imagination. I guess we'll just have to see what happens, but a word of warning. If you go in prepared to hear her out, she could easily trap you in her web of lies. And the more you listen to her honeyed words, the harder it'll be to pull yourself out. Then each and every one of us is doomed. So sure, go talk to her. See how that turns out for all of us.
you make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. Good. You're still listening to reason. It would be better if you had a weapon, but you may still be able to do what needs to be done. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. Do you think you can get me out of these chains? You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge mistake. No, you're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. Okay, I'll be here. Good luck. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. Your shouts and pleas are met with silence. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. 
If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. She barely hesitates before raising her arm to her mouth, her teeth tearing through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from behind you, the clang of bouncing metal. It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. Without hesitation, you bring the blade down and plunge it into the princess's back. Finally. The wound drives her to the ground. Okay, there's no going back now. I'm with you to the end. You, you bastard. Were you lying to me this whole time? The princess pushes away from you, the motion ripping the blade from her back. Wounded, but still alive, she crouches on all fours in the corner of the room and meets your eyes with the ferocity of a cornered predator. You've made a terrible enemy, and there's nothing in the world that can possibly save you from me. I thought we had the upper hand, but it's as if she's barely even threatened by us. It's an act. She's wounded and unarmed. There's nothing she can do to hurt you. I'm not so sure. Don't waver now. As you ready your blade to deliver a lethal blow, she lunges at your legs with the same animal ferocity she used to tear at her arm. Your knife cuts into her again and again as you're tackled to the ground, your body racked with pain as she rips into you with tooth and claw. Forget about trying to rescue her. This is about survival now. Give her everything you've got. Though your nerves are seizing with pain, you know you've done your fair share of damage as well, your blade having left deep gashes in the princess's back. You seize a moment of hesitation to throw her off of you and shakily push yourself back to your knees. We can still turn this around. The princess is still chained to the wall. There's nothing she can do to stop you from getting out of here. What if she doesn't succumb to her wounds? Whatever she is, she is so much more dangerous than I thought she'd be. You rush up the stairs and dive past the threshold. You're safe for now. You close the basement door, locking it behind you and quickly barricading it with the heavy wooden table that once held the blade. Okay, we can make this work. She has an awful wound and we have all the time in the world. Playing jailkeeper for a while might make things a little easier. You settle in against the far wall to watch the basement door. It isn't long before you start to drift off, your eyelids heavy with fatigue. But sleep doesn't come. Instead, your rest is broken by a piercing wailing voice calling out to you from the other side of the door. I know you're still there. Why don't you make things easier on yourself and let me out? It's not like this little door I'll hold for very long anyways. Um, it's probably a good idea to try to get back on my good side. She sounds terrifying. She's less of the princess you saw and more like something out of a nightmare. As she violently rattles the door, you do your best to shut her out of your mind. When I get out of here, I'm going to pick you apart piece by piece. I won't forget what you did, and I'll never forgive it. You don't know the kind of enemy you've made tonight. 
It doesn't sound like she's getting any weaker. No, it doesn't. Just ignore her. Maybe the banging and wailing will stop if you just don't pay attention to it. You put the princess's threats out of your mind as best you can and huddle up against the wall. You jolt awake in the middle of the night to silence in the cabin. The ruckus has stopped and the door to the basement is ajar. It's lock broken and the table shoved out of the way. Where is she? Thanks for helping me get out of that awful basement. You try and stumble to your feet, but as the princess draws near, it's as though your body simply stops working. It isn't all at once. The paralysis comes in waves. First your toes go numb, and then your feet, and then your legs. You lie prone on the floor of the cabin, unable to do anything but witness her approach. Whose side are you on? Yours, of course. But I have a duty to uphold the truth. Lying about the facts of the situation doesn't change them. So helpless. I can take my time with you, can't I? She steps closer one silent footfall at a time, cocking her head in curiosity as you feel your organs shutting down one by one. Or maybe I can't take my time with you. You don't look well. A little green around the gills. What a shame. If you'd only help me get out of here, we could have done such wonderful things together. Your lungs stop drawing in breath, and your heart freezes in your chest. You have seconds left. I'd say better luck next time, but we both know this is the end, don't we? It can't be. This can't actually be how everything ends. I'm sorry, but it is. Everything goes dark and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. terrible sense of deja vu. No, you don't have that. This is the first time either of us have been here. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Shh! What if he hears us? That's a very good question, little voice. What if he does hear you? Shit! I think you'll find yourselves very hard-pressed to keep any secrets from me. Not that it matters right now, because like I said, this is the first time we've met. Still, I'd rather not get off on the wrong foot. We've a world to save, after all. We could go back and forth on this forever, and it won't get you any closer to doing your job and saving the world. So let's just agree to disagree. Those are two very different questions, but fine, I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or at least a version of me. If you're back here, I'm assuming you died, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. 
Oh, we listened to you all right. Worst decision of our incredibly short life. We tried to slay her, we really did. But she was going to kill us. It was either lock her in the basement or let her finish tearing us to ribbons. Well then, congratulations. You've been given another chance to actually do this right. And your solution is to send us back in there? Do you want us to slay the princess? Or do you want the princess to slay us? Obviously, I want you to slay her. One of you poses a threat to the world, and the other doesn't. Anyways, I believe your other question was something along the lines of, What's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. We were killed by the princess, and now everyone's right back where they started. Sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Speak for yourself. From my perspective, there were plenty of consequences. I'm never going to forget the way she just made us stop working. And that's only scratching the surface. If what you said is true, it begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or have you found yourself in another world altogether? If it's the latter, what do you think happened after you died? Do you think the people there lived happily ever after? Or do you think that the princess, left unhindered, brought about the end to everyone and everything, just like I told you she would? If she brought an end to everything and everyone, how are we supposed to stop her? What do you want from us? I want you to succeed. You'll find a way. You're the only one who can. Just be quick about it. Like I said, if she killed you, it was probably because you didn't listen to me. Don't talk to her, don't trust her, just go in, do your job, and save the world. She is just a princess. Whatever you think happened to you last time, just get it out of your head before you get to the cabin, and you'll be fine. People locked her in that basement, and I told you what this place is. It's a path in the woods. Don't overcomplicate things. Look, I'm not supposed to say this, but it's because you're special. You're the only person capable of doing this. Call it a prophecy, if that helps but it's just the way things are. You can't just goad us into doing something by calling us special. It's manipulative. Why are you trying to manipulate us? I don't know, I kind of like being special. Okay, fine. Maybe you can goad him into doing something, but he's not even the one who makes the decisions here. I'm not goading you into doing anything. You already know the princess is dangerous. All I'm trying to say is that you have to be the one to deal with her. I know it doesn't seem fair, but that's just the way it is. And for what it's worth, I know you have it in you to finish the job. We don't. You saw what happened to us last time. We need to leave. I've told you everything you need to know. Going into more detail will just overcomplicate an otherwise very simple situation and make your job more difficult. If you want us to stand a chance against her, we need to be armed with information. What is she really capable of? How are we supposed to stop her? Not to sound like a broken record, but the less you know about her, the better things will go for all of us. I know it sounds like I'm hiding something, but... You're just going to have to take me at my word. 
he isn't telling us everything he knows because he doesn't trust us, which means that we can't trust him. Stop talking yourself in neurotic circles and just get to the cabin already. Do you see the way he keeps pushing us? We have to get out of here. Great, now if you don't mind, the whole world is waiting with bated breath for you to save it from ruin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. I don't think lying and cheating is a thing. She was very direct with us last time. Or at least she was direct with us after we decided to lock her away. It doesn't matter. Don't trust anyone. The interior of the cabin is plain, the smooth wood of the walls almost featureless. The only furniture of note is a lone table, knocked on its side in the corner of the room. A pristine blade stands between you and the open, inviting basement doorway. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Hold on. What happened to the door? There was a door here last time. It's just an empty frame. She's already gotten out, hasn't she? And she's ready for us. She's been waiting. Can't you feel her eyes on us? I'm going to need all of you to pull yourselves together. The princess has not already gotten out. But if you keep getting stuck in your head like this, you're going to struggle to get the job done. So deep breath in, deep breath out. Your task awaits, and only you can do it. You're right. I was so stuck on the eyes watching us that I didn't even notice it there. What are you two talking about? There isn't a mirror. There's a table, the blade sitting on the floor, and the open doorway leading to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. We have to look at it. Unless that's what he wants us to do. And pretending it isn't there is a trick to get us to do exactly what he wants. Exactly. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would a mirror even do? Let you waste time preening yourself instead of doing what needs to be done. Very different. He changed it, didn't he? It's like he's trying to make us doubt our reality. Calm down. Maybe the three of you just think everything is different because you haven't been here before. Enough of this past life nonsense. You haven't died, you certainly haven't been killed by the princess. So focus up. A lot's riding on this. You walk up to the wall next to the empty basement door frame. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. Did he make it go away? Clearly there was something in there worth investigating if he wants it hidden so bad. You reach down and pick the blade up off the floor. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Good. Steel can't lie to us. Is it going to be enough, though? Couldn't you have given us something else? Something... I don't know. 
better than a knife? Could we have a bomb? The blade is the only thing you need to finish your task. You're more than capable of pulling this off, so long as you don't lose faith in yourself. Those are the words of someone who knows he's sending us to our death. You cross over the threshold and onto a series of isolated steps suspended in darkness. More eyes, too. You never mentioned the eyes. The air seeping up from below reminds you of fresh lightning and static, as if you're descending into a place that isn't meant for a creature of flesh and blood. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favour. Her cruel and playful voice prances up the stairs. I didn't think you'd come back. We're gonna have a lot of fun, you and I. Okay, we need a game plan. Last time we were here, just being close to her was enough to kill us. It can't be that hard. But then we'd lose our weapon. We'd have to make it count. Otherwise she'd be furious and we'd be defenceless. If a knife is even enough to do anything against something like her in the first place. It'll be enough. Finally, a voice of reason. The rest of you should take notes. You know why I'm being a pessimist. I'm just asking questions. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. As you emerge, you find yourself between two loose rows of white wooden planks suspended in nothingness. A smattering of cobblestones visible against the inky black of the basement mark where the floor should be, forming vague pathways. At what seems to be the end of the room, they diverge in opposite directions left and right. She could be anywhere, and there's nowhere for us to hide. We're completely exposed. Are you really not going to comment on how weird this place is? No, I'm not. We're going to die down here. I don't want to die again. Please stop saying that. You're only going to make things worse. Just pick a direction and start moving. I wouldn't give it too much thought if I were you. It doesn't really matter. Because either way you go, I'm going to find you. You decide it's best to do nothing. There you are. I told you I was going to find you. As the princess approaches, your legs suddenly go numb. Your arms quickly follow. This is it, isn't it? And you brought a little knife with you. Cute. There has to be a way out of this. Think. Think! What did you do? Pull yourself together. She isn't supposed to be like this. I wonder how many times I'll get to play with you before you break. As your blood begins to coagulate, it's as if every part of your being is coming to a lurching halt. Heart. Lungs. Liver. Nerves. Heart. Lungs. Liver. Nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart. Your lungs pull in a desperate gulp of air as your eyes shoot back open. Heart, lungs. What are you doing? I'm working. 
Do you want this body to function, or do you want... And then experience stops once more as your body reapproaches death. Okay, whatever you were doing, please just start doing it again. Are you sure about that? Are you sure that's what you want, or do you want to interrupt me some more? You have seconds left. Yes, I'm sure. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs. Again, liver. your eyes shoot open as you gasp for breath. Heart, lungs, liver. You can't decide what you want to do, heart. can you? Lungs, liver. Oh well, standing there gasping like a fish is more fun than dead. Even if you look ridiculous. Heart. She isn't attacking us. Why? Heart. The why doesn't matter. She's already proven her ill intent. Don't lose sight of your mission. Your weapon is still in your hands. Strike at her and end this before it's too late. Because I don't want to. And even if I did, I don't have to. Look at the way you're struggling to stay alive. It's taking everything you have to keep your heart pumping right now. And I'm enjoying the show. The princess leans forward, bringing her masked lips close to your ear. If I want to see you gone, all I need to do is break your concentration. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs. She slowly runs her velvet glove across the base of your neck. It feels like static. And then... Shit, shit, make her stop. Hey, snap out of it. Okay, deep breath. Deep breath, we're fine. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart. Your back comes. One moment, and then you're gone. Just like that. Ah, and there's the fear. She pulls away. But that wouldn't be very fun, now would it? I've already done that. But that stupid cabin wouldn't let me. So I started to drag your body out with me and then... Well, you died before I could get to the door. And then I was here. And now you're here too. I don't think I can leave without you. And dead doesn't count. And as much as I love what we have going on, I have bigger plans than tormenting one poor little creature forever. I want to leave. Right as soon as you saw me last time, I didn't think keeping you alive was an option. But it looks like that's not a problem anymore. At least not for me. You seem miserable. Oh no, definitely not. If you're what I need to leave this place, chances are you're pretty useful. I think I'll keep you right by my side. A little good luck charm to make sure I stay free. Don't worry, I'll make sure to take good care of you. I promise. Lungs, liver, nerves, heart, 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 lungs, liver. I'm glad you're seeing things my way. Nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves. I am what I am. It's not my fault that you can't handle being around me. Nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, 
lungs, liver, nerves. Like I said, I am what I am. And right now, I'm in control. Nerves, heart, lungs. So, you might want to be a little nicer than me. She raises one long left finger, its tip hovering just over your skin, seeming to enjoy the lingering threat. But she withdraws, sparing you another momentary glimpse of death. Lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver. Destroy is such an unenlightened way of putting it. So sudden, so violent, so little known. I'm not going to destroy the world, but I am going to hold it in my hands and squeeze it. I'm going to make it afraid, just like I've made you afraid. The world needs fear, doesn't it? Every terror I bring would make the good times so much better. Well, I'm practically doing a public good. So what harm is there really in letting me out? Eventually, they're all full of wet, writhing things, and in the end, each and every one of them gets unwell. And then those things get to become a new everybody, just to come apart all over again. All I want is to be there for it. I want to watch it happen, and maybe do a little unwinding myself. Is that really so much to ask? You don't have a say here, so you should just look on the bright side. I'm not sure what the bright side is for you, but I'm positive you can find it if you look hard enough. We're stuck down here together until you change your mind. Static, and a skipped beat as she touches your shoulder and whispers in your ear. No! Heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver. Only oh, until your heart lungs, finally nerves, gives out. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves, and then, when you die, I'll find myself somewhere new. Heart, lungs, and before too liver, long, nerves, you'll be there too. Heart, lungs, That's how this all nerves, works, right? Heart, lungs, this doesn't liver, end until nerves, you let me out. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves, and a lot can happen lungs, before liver, then. Nerves, I'm sure I can get creative. Nerves, her head, neck cracking uncomfortably, and you can't help but imagine a smile carve its way from ear to ear on the other side of her mask. Thinking about that knife, are we? Put that little theory to the test. See how it plays out. But I don't think you're going to like what happens. Because even if you make me dead, you are not getting out of here. This is mine. And I'm not giving you the stairs unless I'm leaving with you. And then we'll wind up right back where we started. Round and round we'll go. I wonder what will be different next time. Maybe you'll actually be able to move a limb. Who knows? Always liver, going nerves, to win. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart. Is lungs, that a bet liver, you're willing nerves, to take? Heart, lungs, Imagine climbing liver, a mountain nerves, of lifetimes. Heart, lungs, liver, and when you finally nerves, reach the summit, heart, lungs, liver, when you finally nerves, win, heart, lungs, the only liver, view nerves, you find lungs, is lungs, me. Liver, nerves, heart, and that I push you. And you go tumbling all the way down those millions upon millions of battered and broken pieces of you that couldn't make the cut. Lungs, liver, nerves, heart. What then? Would you have it in you to climb again? It sounds like a lot of effort for nothing. When instead we could just leave this place together. Hand in hand. Lungs, liver, nerves, heart. Lungs, liver, nerves, liver. 
Are you serious? Heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart. You fling the blade into the void, denying yourself the opportunity to ever slay her and finish your mission. Heart, lungs, liver. Nobody's happy here, but heart. Maybe it's for the best. Nerves, heart, lungs, liver. You poor deluded thing. Do you think a single moment of bravery changes you into something you're not? I am what I am, and you're always going to be a coward. Heart, lungs, liver. She raises a hand to her mask and pulls it down. You don't get the chance to see what lies beneath before it envelops you. Like a creeping mold, the complete reality of your existence threads its way through your mind. Birth, death, birth again, decay and bloom, a million stitches from a million microscopic wounds you've inflicted on everyone you've ever met, with every muscle you've moved and every word you've ever spoken. No, 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 no. Let me out. Your existence hurts them. Let me out. A lonely soul in a room by itself, weeping. It lives for 80 years and then it's gone. And then it's there again. Let me out. A reprieve, a good life, love, children, a steady career, recognition from your peers. Here one moment, gone the next. The worms have found their orifices. Let me out! Diagnosis. It forgets everything it is. Anger, rage, distance, poverty. The lonely soul is lonely again. Love turns to mockery. It dies. It is reborn. Worse. Lonelier. Let. Me. Out! No, 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 no. No, no. What's, what's happening to us? Let me out! This is all too much. I can't keep going. You can't keep going? What are you talking about? Oops. I think I broke you. I'll see you soon. You'll know what to do. You're on a path in the... Shit! Shit! What? What the hell was that? Who are we? What are we doing? There was a princess, I think. It's all so fuzzy. It hurts when I try to remember. You shouldn't know about the princess. At least, not until I... You've already been here, haven't you? I guess. It, it feels so long ago, almost like we've never left. We have to let her out. No, that's the opposite of what you're here to do. You have to slay her. Slay? We decided not to do that, didn't we? Yeah, we're supposed to let her out. It's really the only way this works out for us. If you think about it, she's the one with power here. Nobody else can do much of anything. No, we were supposed to keep her trapped there forever, I think. We're supposed to be unfeeling. How many times do I have to tell you to snuff out your heart? We can't be unfeeling. Not when there's so much fear everywhere. There's nothing for us to do. We've already tried everything. We love her, so we have to set her free. Can we love something that hates us? Can we love something that hurts us? To be given an ounce of kindness from something so cruel 
would be more pure than any other love. Why are there so many of us? There aren't supposed to be so many of us. This is bad. You need to get a grip. What did you let happen? How many times have you been here? Of course we're wrong. She's the only thing that's right. Yes, obviously they're all wrong. What are you going to do about it? There's nothing worth making sense of. They're clearly all traumatized. And yet, you aren't. We break apart, and you stay the same. Yeah, what's your secret? Why can you break the rules when we can't? We've tried that. It doesn't work. Our hearts always brought us back to her. The deck is stacked. So many paths, and they're all circles. I don't care how you feel. You have to slay her. You have to pull yourself together. You have to snap out of it. You're lucky you haven't been stuck here like the rest of them. There's no other way to keep going. You either need to forget, or you need to stop feeling much of anything. They can't do either. He's not wrong. He's the only smart one left, if you ask me. He's worse than her. Many, 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 many times. It feels like we've been here forever. But it also feels like we've barely been here at all. It doesn't matter. Yes, we just have to do what she says and then everything will be fine. It won't. It will be for us. She said so. You're part of everything. If things aren't fine for everything, they won't be fine for you. There's no difference between fine and not fine. It just goes on and on. What does here even mean, if you really think about it? Shut up. You were here. Every single time. You did your best, really. There's just a pecking order. And our cruel and beautiful goddess sits atop it, right where she's always belonged. You're lucky. What I would give to be able to forget. I've tried to keep them numb, but they're all too soft. A shame, really. Don't think about that too hard. All it will do is weaken your resolve and make it that much harder for you to slay her. Maybe you're shattered in your own way. Are you your memories? Or are you the one perceiving the present moment? Ugh, here you go philosophizing again. It never goes anywhere. Yes, this is far from the first time you've asked us about consciousness. Who am I? What am I? What is I? Who even cares? They're good questions, great questions even, but they don't have any answers and they all just end in quivering torment. It doesn't matter what we do, because we always find her, and if we don't find her, she always finds us. 
and then she smashes us into smaller pieces. If you all just stopped feeling, we could have been done with this ages ago. Your thoughts are far too scattered to rein back in. Your only option is to silence them. You slowly make your way through the umbral forest, bumping against unseen trees as you grasp through the darkness for a way forward. But eventually, you do make it to the cabin. Or rather, you make it to the place a cabin should have been. Instead, all you find is an empty hill. No, no, this isn't right. There's a cabin there. There's always supposed to be a cabin there. Don't ask him about the mirror. He always says he never sees it. He always lies. And he always makes it gone. Stay focused. You still have a job to do, and it's best not to be distracted by fraying thoughts. There is no mirror. You know that as well as I do. She's still here buried deep inside the earth. Just walk up the hill. You always give too much space to the others. It's why you always lose. They've been heard too much. It's why they are the way they are. Exactly. They are delusions, and all that catering to them will do is drag you down to their level. You have to keep moving. Or you could just give up. You walk up the hill, hesitating just beyond the bounds of the cabin. The cabin that isn't there. You've got to clean the mirror, haven't you? You've got to see what's in it. Smash it to pieces. She's on the other side, and we have to let her out. It's the only way we can be free. It's the only way we can have our thoughts back. Just go around it. Just do something. It doesn't matter what. Proceed. Proceed to where? I'm afraid you're going to have to be a little more specific. That's a new one. Do you think it'll work? Of course it'll work. He always makes the best decisions. It's why he gets to make them. And it already has worked. It's gone, don't you see? We're one step closer to her. The interior of the cabin is much the same as the exterior of the cabin. A dull, fuzzy, dreamlike nothing. It's empty and isolating, but there's just enough vague shape and unknown texture to suggest the structure therein. Wrong and unsettling as it may be. The only object of note is a pristine blade buried in the dirt floor, a hint of its shining edge teasing through the sediment. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you're going to do this right. Take it. It's the only way forward. You reach down to take the blade, but as you do, the ground beneath it shifts, the weapon sinking deep into the earth. You lean over the hole and gaze into the abyss. It is so very deep. Deep in the bowels of the earth, you see something staring back at you. It fills you with dread. It's her. She's watching us. She never stops watching us. You really are a coward. 
every word she speaks, the princess in the pit blinks closer. When I said that way back when, you know that, right? Closer. I was having some fun, and I guess I wanted to see if I could knock you. And closer. Watching over me forever? That was so brave. Closer. But forever is so, so long. And time erodes everything. Except for me. I've already taken your will, and you're not getting it back. And it's not this way to take my will. And let me out. It'll be so much fun. You and me, together, exploring the world and spreading fear wherever we go. Well, mostly just me. But you'll get to be there too. A witness. I can even make you a little cage if you want. Gilded and everything. Do something. Do anything that isn't taking her hand. You extend your hand to hers. For all her past cruelties, the moment feels gentle, tender even. I can't believe you just made me say that. I hate you. The motion is difficult at first, as if something still resists your efforts. But then that resistance gives way, and it's over. I didn't think I'd be so... tired. Why is it so cold? She's gone. Yeah. I can finally think again. Almost. That mirror's back. What does that mean for us? I'm sure it'll be whisked away, just like her. Maybe it won't be gone. Things are different now, aren't they? Doesn't seem like there's much else to do here. Finally! We can smash it. Oh, will you stop with the smashing? What do we say, boys? One last vain attempt to look at ourselves. Yeah. I think I'd like that. Seems we've got a majority. All that's left is to give it a look. Something tells me that this is the end of the line. But I don't feel bad about it. I'm ready. It feels... okay. The fear's... gone. I'm done fighting. My heart feels... quiet. The game was always going to end. I'll be free of all of you. I'm ready for the truth. I'm ready to sleep. I'm just ready to be anywhere that isn't here. Boys, it's been an honor.
there's a world beyond the endless walls of the long quiet. I am curious to see what it means for us to know it. It doesn't matter if there are. People are too small for us. You and I are the only things that interest me. We are real. Nothing is an idea that dwells in the absence of something. But nothing cannot exist on its own. And because of that, nothing can't exist. This one is filled with sadness, a doll, abandoned to the company of her darkest impulses. She desires only companionship, but the only thing she knows is how to hurt. She will make for a tender heart. Do not mourn her, she has finally found her way home. If I did, I would already be awake. No, their minds are empty, existent, but constantly shifting into something new. Do you think your narrator lives in the spaces beyond? These gifts are a conversation, and each one shows me the contours of your heart. The only thing I want to see is what you choose for me when the thread is fully drawn. The next time I see you, each of us will finally know what we are. I will be here. Waiting for you.